Okay, you've bought some of these Neopixel clones, 5050s, RGB LEDs, and you want to put them in a model. Here's how to set them up to use WLED. First of all, these are much cheaper buying in bulk. I bought 10 of these off eBay, cost £10 in the UK, whereas I bought 100 off Amazon and it only cost £15 on Amazon Prime in the UK. So 10 times cheaper to buy these in bulk. And the likelihood is you might muck a few up when you're putting them in a model. So I would go and spend the extra fiver and buy loads so you've got some spares. Next, you need a controller board. So these are versions of the Wemos D1. They're about £6 on Amazon. Uh, there's, there's two versions that I've found. This one doesn't have this can on. Go for the ones with the can on them uh, because this one you have to put an external aerial on. So if you want something compact, maybe this one isn't for you. So again, with these, £6 delivered on Amazon. However, you can buy for about £20 on Amazon, you can buy five of them. If you go to AliExpress, you can buy five of them for about £9. On the back of them, there's a chip. That's the chip for the USB interface. Now, this one is a CH101 or CH something. Uh, sometimes you need to put drivers on for that onto your Mac or your PC. Modern Macs have, have these drivers on. But just a warning that ones that you source not from AliExpress might have a different driver chip on, which is more commonly used. But it doesn't really matter. Dead easy to find the drivers for it. And then once you've got those, if you've used a USB serial thing in your computer before, probably you've already installed those drivers right so how do we set these up this one's got USB-C so I've got a little adapter there and I make sure that I've got a cable that I know is data because you might have some problems with that so let's plug that in it won't do anything on the computer but let's just plug it in so next we go to Google all right now you must use Chrome on a Mac or Edge or Chrome on a PC to do this because they have this special bit where that can access the USB port built into them. When you're in Google, if you type in WLED install and I've got mine there already. So here's the install WLED.me. That's the URL that you might want to go to if you don't want to Google it. And then you literally you hit install. So when you hit install, it shows you the devices that you've got installed on your machine. It might look slightly differently on the PC, but there's the device. So select that and hit connect. And now all you've got to do is hit install WLED. Do you want to install it? All data on the device will be erased. Yes, we don't care. See, I've set nothing else. I've just used the default settings of the web page and it will go through and it will erase the device. It will go through, it will erase the device. Now, sometimes I like to solder the first NeoPixel onto the WLED to begin with because then you can see it's working straight away. But to be honest, this will work once it's flashed. If your device doesn't show up on the list, make sure that you've got the drivers installed, as I said, to begin with. And that will depend on the chip. And when you put it in, it might say it's unrecognized and ask you to install the drivers. Then you'll be able to search for the drivers that you need. But it's not actually drivers for the ESB and for the WLED bit. It's just the drivers for this USB chip that you're installing. OK, installation complete. And I hit next and now it asks you to put your Wi-Fi in. So there's my Wi-Fi and I'm not going to show you the password, but we type that in and do connect. And that writes your Wi-Fi details onto this little chip. All right, so now we've got two options. We can either go to the app or you can actually edit the device directly and go to the uh, web interface that's built into this now that we've just flashed on to begin to control it. And here it is. So if I had a, if I had a NeoPixel or a string of LEDs put into this, now I could begin to control it. But as you see, it always starts on orange, which is good because then you know it's working. Once you've got the Wemos programmed, now let's wire up the first NeoPixel. I've had good results using this enameled wire, scientific wire company, and a reel will last you forever. But you do have to prepare the edges. You have to sand it down and then tin it with a soldering iron. So let's solder this up, bring it off the desk a little bit. I'm soldering to the five volt on the Wemos. And then ground 
And then the data pin. Now, the data pin, depending on what device you've got, might be different. But this one I've used on data four before. So let's uh, see what happens if I use that. Sometimes it's on data two, uh, but that's different just because that says data D4. It doesn't mean that it's pin four. So data four actually, I think, is GPIO pin two. I mean, if five volts is zero, ground is one. It makes sense that number two is data four, maybe. All right, so that's got the output. Now let's get to the near pixel. Normally I solder the near pixels first. So you've seen me doing that on other things. It's also slightly easier if you apply some flux to these pads with a flux pen first. And then on the data inside, there's the five volts. A bit of blue tack might help you with this. And there's the ground at the bottom. So now we get the Wemos and the ground on this one is the middle one. So let's do ground to ground. Whoops, I'm going to get a bit of blue tack here. So just heat the solder up again and let the wire fall onto it. Then heat the wire for a second. That's fine. Then data in, which is coming from pin four. So this engineering block's a bit greasy, so this isn't working very well. But let's put the date data in and the five volts in now I normally wire up the near pixels first and you can see why because they're a bit fiddly otherwise so now this has been programmed we know it's got the Wi-Fi on as well so let's plug it in so if your D1 has got a little telltale on that will light up when you plug it in and you see as I plugged it in there was a flash from that I don't know if you noticed that but then it comes up with this orange light. So that's as simple as it is to, can, whoops. So it's as simple as that to wire these up. And obviously on this one, D4 was the right pin. So these three ones all together there, it just connected perfectly. Then when you want to add the next near pixel in the chain, just solder those on there to the out, take three wires from the out and put it to the next one in the chain. And then you can use WLED to your heart's content. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope you found it useful. Just a really quick tutorial. I won't bother talking about WLED. It's really easy to play with if you get the app or just connect to it via the web interface and just fiddle with it and see what happens. All right. Hope you enjoyed this. All that there is to say now is bye. Come back. Bye. Come back. Bye.